Hey, Vince. Hey, look, everybody, Vince Palomara. Amazing, Vince Palomara is here again. Dude, you really need to start saving your pennies. You're, you're booking me and my friends and, uh, and colleagues on all these cameos, and uh, I mean, we appreciate them, and thank you for that. But uh, I absolutely like discussing things like uh, some, some of the things that you ask, and one of the questions is about the Pittsburgh Steelers. Um, I became a Steelers fan by default of being a Pirates fan. And my little sister, my, she's actually my half-sister, her father, uh, his, his cousin played for the Pittsburgh Pirates. And when I was young, impressionable, and loved sports and playing Little League and all that, we got to go to a few Dodger games when the Pirates were playing the Dodgers. And it was, uh, it was awesome because we, we were VIP because of her dad's cousin. And from that, it just kind of filtered over into naturally accepting and loving the Steelers. The whole Pittsburgh thing was such a big influence in my life. Uh, that's, I mean, when you think back to those days, of the, the dream team of Mean Joe Green and Fran Tarkenton and just so many great players, that, that, that truly was the era for the Steelers. And I've just remained a fan since. So, yeah, I'm a Steelers fan by default. And the Pirates, not so much. I moved on. I'm not really watching so much baseball. But when it comes to football, the Steelers are my team and the Lakers continue to be my basketball team. And there you go. So question number two, you're talking about the Ingve Live and 85 DVD. Ingve seems to be stepping in front of you intentionally. <laughs> it's funny that not so many people uh, noticed that. Uh, a few did. And yes, I noticed it too. We That never happened during any other show. But I believe because in general... Um, Ingve probably knew the cameras were rolling and uh, he wanted to make sure, even while I was singing, that there would be more focus on him. I don't know, again, if that was intentional on his part, but it certainly worked. And I guess when they did the editing, they it, pretty much every time he stood in front of me, they panned to something else. But I did notice that during the show and there were many a time where um, I thought, what's going on here? So when he would do it or when I th I saw he might be trying to step in front of me, like a, maybe like the second half of the show, I would kind of move to the side and just let him have that spot. But for the most part, um, when you think about it, that DVD came out great. That well, DVD was back, it was out on home video back then. And that was the fifth show we ever did as a live band. We We'd only done... The first show was in uh, Reseda at the Country Club in L.A., which is now closed. The second show was at the Kabuki Theater in San Francisco. And then we did two other shows in Japan. And the third show was that particular show. So that was show number five for us in terms of a, a live touring act. So we were still kind of learning each other's on stage presence and movements and where we're going to go for what parts of the set. I wish they would have filmed later in the actual tour because it probably would have been a little more effective. It would have seemed um, more natural. It was still so early on. I, 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 I cringe at so many when I look at some of that footage because I just, I look so goofy, uh, but that's how you live. That's how you learn. And that thing is a classic now. So there you go, Vince. You got two questions for the price of two, <laughs> whatever that means. Later, man.